Dangerous Assignment. Transcribed starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to wind up with me exactly one foot from death. Morning, Commissioner. You sent for me? Steve, I've arranged an appointment for you in Oslo, Norway, tomorrow night. Oh, who am I supposed to meet? We won't know until he shows up. Room 21, Hotel Ingar. Is this going to be a friendly meeting, or are things apt to get rough, Commissioner? We've been after this man for a long time, Steve. He heads an organization known as the Bureau, an international clearinghouse for stolen information. Mm, Sounds like big business. It is. This man has agents operating in every European capital, as well as here in the United States. They pick up any secret information they can buy or steal, funnel it back to the Bureau, where he sorts it out and peddles it to any nation interested. I see. So why is he going to show up at the Hotel Angar in Oslo? He's bringing a payroll. He's to turn over $50,000 to a man representing his agents in this country. And how did we find this out? Our boys grabbed this representative in New York last night as he was about to board a plane for Europe. He talked plenty. I get it. So I take this gent's place and go on to Oslo to meet Mr. Big. Uh, wait a minute, Commissioner. Won't it sort of complicate things if Mr. Big knows what the courier looks like? He won't. A different man is sent for the payroll each time. And the man we have in custody has never met the big shot. Okay, what name do I use? Francis. You're kidding. Nick Francis. That's the courier's name. Get over to Oslo, Steve. It's vitally important we nail the head of this organization. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Get over to Oslo, Norway, under the name Nick Francis, and keep an appointment with a gent who heads an international information ring. It's early Thursday evening when my plane lands at the Norwegian capital. As I saunter through the airport waiting room, I get the feeling that a pair of eyes are planted on the back of my head. Attention, please. Will Mr. Francis report to the information desk? Attention, Mr. Francis. Well, here we go already. I don't know if that's good or not. I look around, spot the info desk at the far end of the waiting room, and walk over. Yes, sir. May I assist you? You were paging me. I'm Nick Francis. Oh, yes. Uh, A a lady has been asking for you. Oh, well. uh, Let me see. uh, Ah, over there. You you see the large lady with the red hat uh, carrying the parriage cage? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sitting next to her on the left, the attractive blonde lady. Uh, That's the one. Well, that's better. Ah, here she comes. Looks like Oslo's answer to Marilyn Monroe. I beg pardon? You are Mr. Francis? That's right. Well, I am Helga Strauss. Uh, there has been a change of plans, Mr. Francis. I was sent to inform you. It is not safe here at the hotel. Thanks for the tip. What now? Uh, you will come with me. I will take you to the meeting. Okay. Lead on, Helga. Outside, we ease into her car and drive off. During the next ten minutes, she doesn't volunteer much information, and I don't ask. Finally, she wheels the car to a stop in a small side street in a quiet neighborhood. I follow her down a winding path and around to the front of an old dilapidated house. We push through the rickety front gate and up onto the porch. Hey, place kind of dark. Doesn't seem to be anyone home. Shh. Wait here. I will go around to the back. Want me to come along? No, no. You, you wait here. I light up a cigarette and wait. A couple of minutes go by, and then I happen to spot something partially hidden in the weeds not far from the porch. I go down and pick it up. It's a small sign on a post, and I know just enough Norwegian to read it. For sale. I grab my bag and head down the path on the double. When I get back to the street, Helga's car is long gone. Yeah, as neat a sucker play to get me out of the way as I've ever seen. No blood, no mess, no fuss. Simple, but effective. 
I give myself three demerits and spend the next ten minutes trying to find a cab. It's another fifteen minutes before I pull up at the Hotel Engar. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm Leanvold. May I help you? I have a reservation. The name is Nick Francis. The... But, but how can that be, sir? Look, what goes? Uh, but Mr. Francis is already in his room. What? Yes, sir. He checked in an hour ago. Went upstairs immediately. I don't wait for the elevator. I take the stairs to it. A clip and 40 seconds later, I pull up at the door of room 21 and try the knob. The door's unlocked. The gent curled up on the floor, probably the phony Nick Francis. He has a surprised look on his face. I guess he wasn't expecting the knife that's buried in his back. Five minutes later, the law arrives in the person of one Lieutenant Roberg. He clears the room of interested spectators, and when we're alone, I show him my credentials and give him a fast rundown on Then our killer could have been the man you are seeking, the head of this so-called bureau. Right. He walks in, recognizes this gent as a phony, and slips him the knife. Uh, Another possibility, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, What if he knew or suspected the man in the room here was an American agent? I don't see how he could have found that out, but it's a thought, and not a very pleasant one. I found this in his pocket. A key? If it's a locker, I'd say. There's a number stamped on the back. Also, a manufacturer's mark. Yes, yes. I do not think this will be difficult to trace. The lieutenant puts in a couple of phone calls and finds out the key is to a baggage locker. And ten minutes later, we roll up in front of the railroad station in a police car. As the lieutenant and I hurry inside, I bump into an old friend. Oh, excuse me. I... Oh, it's you. Yeah, me. Hold on, sweetheart. Let me go here for call to police. You can whisper for one, Helga. Meet Lieutenant Roberg. What? This lieutenant is the little lady I was telling you about. She's in the real estate business. Specializes in empty houses. So, how fortunate we meet, my dear. I have some questions I would like to ask concerning the affair at the Hotel Engar this evening. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You can drop that routine, sweetheart. You're up to here in murder. Murder? Yeah, your boyfriend. Rudy, he... Oh, you lie. A trip to the morgue might convince you. Rudy, dead. What was your boyfriend's game? Come on, Helga. Well, I... I knew very little about it. We met Rudy and I at the inn two months ago. He is... Well, he was a ski instructor. Uh, what inn is this you speak of? Jornsen's. It is in the mountains near the village of Avdal. A few days ago, he told me that he had uncovered a marvelous opportunity to, to make a lot of money. That I could help him. What was this opportunity? Uh, he, he was to come to the Hotel Engar here in Oslo. Pose as a man named Nicholas Francis. And someone would give him $50,000. And who was this someone? I do not know. Rudy did not tell me. You said that he had heard part of a telephone conversation at the inn. One of the guests was involved. He did not tell me who that guest was, though. I see. Well, Lieutenant, suppose you escort Helga to the car, huh? I'll see what this locker key turns up. Over here, Mr. Mitchell. Ah, where's our girlfriend? In the car. Uh, my man is with her. Here's the stuff I found in the station locker. Small traveling bag, clothing. Also a wallet and identification papers. Checks with what Helga told us. I see. Well, come, let, let's go back to headquarters then. You go on, Lieutenant. I've just bought a train ticket to Avdal. You are going up to the inn? Yeah. I'm interested in the guests staying there, or one of them anyway. I'd like to find out which one took a little trip to Oslo today. Having rid himself of Rudy, you, you think he has gone back to the inn? Maybe. Probably to set up another contact with Nick Francis. I see. But uh, suppose our killer knew that the man he was to meet in that room was an American agent. Instead, he finds Rudy, whom he recognizes as the ski instructor. He kills him because, obviously, Rudy knows too much. Go on, Lieutenant. There is still the American agent to be disposed of. You. The killer hurries to the airport to contact Nick Francis, perhaps by the same method the girl used. Only she beats him to it, but... He gets a good look at me. And now if you show up at the inn... Yeah, I'm a dead pigeon. That is if your theory is right. If you're wrong, I'll see you around, Lieutenant.
Steve Mitchell will continue his dangerous assignment in just a moment. Now back to Dangerous Assignment and Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Well, at this point, it looks like Rudy, the ski instructor at Jorison's Lodge up in the mountains, decided to deal himself into the card game by posing as Nick Francis to collect a payroll from the boss of an international secret information ring, which, of course, is what I'm trying to do also in order to nab the boss, but... Rudy got himself dealt a knife in the back, which, of course, doesn't exactly relax my shoulder blades any. Right now, though, it looks like my best chance of finding the killer is up at the inn, so I hop the next train. Two hours later, I get off at a small village at the foot of a mountain. Then I spot another guy getting off the train, a fat gent with a cane who comes waddling toward me. Ah, good afternoon, sir. Good Hi. afternoon. Hi. Is your destination the inn? Why, uh, yeah, you know where it is? Sight along McCain, sir, up on the side of the mountain. Huh? Hey, long way up. Hey, Lena should be here any moment. Lena? The innkeeper's daughter. <laughs> she usually meets the trains. Oh, you're a guest at the inn, Mr. Whitley is the name, sir. Ronald Whitley. And you? Steve Mitchell. Delighted. Yes, yes, I'm a guest at the inn. But you took a little trip into Oslo, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> Made a rare find, too. Why? I'm a collector. Isn't this a beauty? The cane? Oh, it's much more than just an ordinary cane. Seat. Ooh. A sword cane, eh? Hey. I'm sorry, old boy. Look, would you flourish that thing somewhere else than in the vicinity of my belt buckle? <laughs> Did I come a bit too close for comfort? Yeah. <laughs> ah, here's Lena. Hello, Mr. Whitley. My dear, this is Steve Mitchell. Another guest for you. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. Well, hello. A charming addition to the inn, don't you think, Mitchell? Yeah, and I haven't even seen the inn. <laughs> come along, both of you. This is your room, Mr. Mitchell. Very nice. And here... A nice view from this balcony, don't you think? Yeah. A long way down, too. Over there, in that direction, is... Uh... Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I did not mean to crowd you against the rain. Of course not. I, I just wanted to point out the pond where we skate. And down there is another pond... Quite beautiful in the evening. Oh? Perhaps you would like to see it. Perhaps you'd like to show it to me. Perhaps tonight. That's a date. You know, things happen kind of fast up here. Must be the altitude. Or the attitude. <laughs> Could be. Many uh, guests here at the inn? Oh, quite a few. You have already met one of them, Mr. Whitley. Yeah, the gent with the sword cane. He took a quick trip to Oslo last night, huh? Yeah, with Mr. Calder. Who's Mr. Calder? He's another guest who also took a trip into Oslo. Has he come back yet? Yeah, on an earlier train this afternoon. Where is he now? I believe he's out skiing. Well, come along downstairs, Mr. Mitchell. I introduce you to some of the guests. Huh? Fine, Lena. Oh, here's one of them now coming down the hall. That's some cast he's got on that foot. Yeah, poor Mr. Tarson. Well, well, Lena, my dear. Uh, Mr. Tarson, I'd like you to meet another guest, Mr. Steve Mitchell. Mr. Tarson? Uh, make it Tass, Steve. That's what everybody calls me, just plain Tass. Looks like you've had an accident. Oh, the ankle? Well, Steve, that one's on me. Yes, sir, I was a chucklehead. That's all there is to it. How so? Live dangerously. That's my motto. <laughs> Old Taz has only been skiing a couple of months, but already he's not satisfied with the easiest low back of the end. No, sir, he's got to try the big one over the ridge. A very dangerous slope, Steve. Talk about a three-point landing, and one of the points happened to be my ankle. Quite a few of us saw it happen. We thought he was dead for a moment. Only thing that saved me, I guess, was that I hit first on my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'll see you around, Mr. Tasson. <laughs> I wander around the inn, sizing up the guests, and of course I'm wondering about that cast on Tasson's ankle, and if it's legit, but I find out real soon that it is. One of the guests is the doctor who set the ankle, and he tells me it was broken in two places. That sort of crosses laughing boy Tasson off my list, because the gent I'm after killed Rudy in Oslo, and Tasson hasn't left the inn. That sort of focuses attention on Whitley, the sword cane artist, and Cooler, who's still out skiing. Also, I'm wondering about that quick date Lena made with me for tonight. She could be involved, too. Towards night, I wander into the lounge. Steve? Hmm? 
Over here by the fireplace. Oh, Tessin. All right, come on in and join us for a drink, huh? Take the chill out of your bones. Uh, oh, you know Whitley, Steve. Sure, he made quite an impression on me earlier with the point of his sword cane. You are enjoying your stay here, Steve? Yeah, I... Oh, what is it, Steve? Uh, nothing, I'll be back. What starts me moving is the sight of a man starting down the stairs. It's Lindvald, the clerk from the Hotel Engar in Oslo. As he reaches the bottom of the stairs, he spots me and ducks out a back door. I pound after him. Outside, he's nowhere in sight. I circle around the inn a couple of minutes, but there's no sign of him. And the snow is too cut up to do any tracking. Then, as I round the corner of the building... Hey! <coughs> Lieutenant Roberg from Oslo, what are you doing here? Well, I ran to the Hotel Engar to question the clerk Lindvold again. About the times involved in Rudy's murder. They told me Lindvall had been taken ill suddenly. As I was leaving, I, I observed him coming out of the rear entrance. I, I followed him to the depot. And then here, huh? Come on, he can't be far. If Lindvall is involved, Mitchell, that, that means... Hold it. What's the matter? Sounds like an engine of some sort. The ski lift. Lindvall's going up the slope in one of the seats. Come on. We head for the ski lift, but halfway up the slope, Lindvall spots us and jumps off. We start after him. It's slow going in the snow, but we gain on him. Then over the ridge, he comes to a deep crevice. He tries to jump across, but he doesn't make it. Ah! Mitchell! Yeah, that takes care of Lindvall. Look, I figured he was just a stooge in the deal. Also, the people at the inn can't possibly know he's dead. So? So we're going back to the inn and set a little trap. If it works, I hook the boss. When we get to the inn, Lieutenant Roberg goes inside alone. I ease up to a window where I can hear. Is uh, Mr. Mitchell here? No, he went outside some time ago. I am Lieutenant Roberg of the Oslo Police. When Mitchell returns, tell him I am uh, taking a man named Lindvold into the village for questioning. I want Mitchell to join me immediately. Lieutenant Roberg leaves the inn. I wait a few minutes and then stroll inside. I say... The policeman looking for you. Huh? He wants you to come into the village. Oh? Well, yours is the only car here, Lena. Could I borrow it? Of course. She gives me the keys and I go upstairs, supposedly to change clothes, but actually to wait and see who shows up. I figure the head of the information ring, one of the guests, now thinks that Lindvold is under arrest, and if he's afraid Lindvold will talk, he'll either want to stop me from getting into the village or else he'll try it for a getaway. Either way, he'll want those car keys I've got, and he'll come after them. And it didn't take him long. I say, Mitchell. Whitley? If you're going into the village, would you pick up a couple of magazines for me? Oh, fine. Okay. Yeah, I've written down the names. Thanks, Ophler. Hmm. Hmm. Hold it, Mitchell. Well, well, laughing boy Tasson. I should have remembered that balcony runs clear across the front of the inn. You get around pretty well for a guy with one foot in a cast. I manage. You don't seem surprised to see me. I'm not. That's why Whitley's showing up threw me for a moment. No, as soon as I found out Linvald was in the deal, the light started to dawn, and you were the logical one. How so? Look, Rudy, the ski instructor, found out there was going to be a payoff to your American representative, Nick Francis, so Rudy decided to pose as Francis and collect. That's right. But he'd have hardly done it if he thought the boss was going to make the payoff in person. He had to be sure the boss wouldn't come to Oslo. How could he be sure? Well, a busted ankle, for instance. I see. Linvold was to make your payoff for you, but Linvold recognized Rudy as a phony and knocked him off, then came back here to report to you. That's pretty nice figuring, Mitchell, but too late. Then I'll just step out on the balcony here and hand over those keys. Okay. That's far enough. What happens now? An unfortunate accident. It's a long way down, and you shouldn't have been standing so close to the rail. Neither should you. Uh, Mitchell! I dive to one side and hack at his gun. Uh, Knocks the shot wild. He swings the gun at me, uh, but I duck under it. Throw him off balance. Uh, All his weight comes down on the bum foot and the uh, toward him. Uh, uh, oh, brother. Mitchell! Mitchell! I double back as you suggested. Hello, Lieutenant. That was Tasson. Yeah, he took the big drop, just like his stooge, Linvald. I guess that's what you call two falls to a finish. (laughs) 
Our star, Brian Donlevy, will return in a moment. Next week, Lisbon. A guy who didn't want to get arrested and a girl who did. And that will be Steve Mitchell's dangerous assignment next week. Included in tonight's cast were Ken Peters, G.G. Pearson, Paul Fries, Dan O'Herlihy, and Betty Lou Gerson. This is John Storm speaking. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian John Doe, and is directed by Bill Carn. Be with us again next week at this same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another transcribed dangerous assignment. On NBC.